I want you to consider an idea put forward by Douglas Rushkoff. In the digital era, weaponized capitalism is driving exploitative expansion into the human body to colonize our minds and attention as it faces the limitations of the finite world. And that we agree to these terms and conditions. And this is increasing the gap between the haves and the have not. The spoils of the digital revolution are increasingly going to a few players. The extractive colonial interests of capitalism have in some ways come to dominate the landscape. And these huge companies now control the terms and conditions to which we abide by. Big tech companies are now some of the biggest companies in history. And the increased pace of the digital extraction that happens means inequality is rising faster than ever. Exploitative new technologies come with the promise of utopian democratized future full of leisure time. And that's what makes us agree to the terms and conditions. As the neoliberal hypercapitalism has taken hold in the past few decades, spurred on by Wired magazine, living standards and even life expectancy is now starting to fall in places like the United States. We are currently on the eve of massive change as big data has evolved along with machine learning to create new levels of artificial intelligence. How much closer are we to giving over our minds to a surveillance arm, a control arm, a marketing arm, for these corporations to dominate. In the new augmented reality, when we have little chips in our brain, what controls are we going to give over? What levels of security are we going to give to these companies? And the artificial intelligence machines that we build inevitably contain the fingerprints, values and ideologies of the humans that encode them. Australia's chief scientist Alan Fingal recently cited an episode where machines in a values come which estimates which prisoners are likely to reoffend. Estimated blacks would reoffend at twice the rate at which they actually did, and whites would reoffend at half the rate at which they actually did. This kind of shows our machines should always follow a golden rule, where machines cannot take away our liberties, but only grant liberties. We have already seen in China the introduction of a social score, which determines what individuals can and can't do, what school they will go to, where they can travel. Jay McGonkel runs a futures program at Stanford University and she looks at ways in which multi-game playing platforms can solve human problems and solve societal ills, even win Nobel Prizes. And if ever we needed the power of gamers to come on board and do something amazing, now's the time.